probably don't fully comprehend is what a business of extremes racing can be. That along with the great triumphs come the tragedies. And top Australian trainer Lee Friedman right now is in the grip of both. His champion and Australia's current pin-up Maccabi Diva is poised to win Australia's greatest weight for age race, the Cox Plate, next Saturday and her third Melbourne Cup soon after. But until yesterday, Friedman had his own pin-up, a gallant racehorse called Mummify, not quite a champion, but almost an honorary member of the Friedman family. Great scenes here at Caulfield. And one horse in particular has been here before and done it. In fact, this is his third Caulfield Cup, and I'm talking about Mummify. The Caulfield Cup is Australia's most important staying race, bar the big one. Mummify had scored once, and this year Friedman thought he had a big chance to join a small band of greats who'd done it twice. Distinctly secret going out after Mummify and Grayson down the outside. In 2003, Mummify had led all the way into the wild cheers of a happy band of youthful owners and jockey Danny Nikolic riding high in the saddle, won like a budding champion. The win came at a critically tough time in Friedman's career and was followed by more Group 1 wins, including Friedman's first international success in the world-rated Singapore Cup early this year. It's Mummify on the outside, just in front of Phoenix Reach, and Mummify's going to win it. Mummify for Danny Nikolic and Lee Friedman. By, out the Caulfield Cup, and it's Mummify by last Saturday, Mummify was again in winning form, but faced his stiffest test, carrying top weight, starting from barrier 17 in an 18 horse field and with a fatal vulnerability nobody could be expected to know about but he came within a few meters of pulling it off anyway then came disaster 80 metres or so past the post, Mummify dipped his head and nearly went down. After diagnosing a shattered knee, vets wanted to put Mummify down immediately. A distraught Friedman resisted. I didn't want him doing anything here. I just said, listen, give the horse a bit more time. He's not distressed. Get him over to the hospital, get the horse bandaged up, get some beauty into him, get him feeling good, and get him into a box with some straw and that. And let's just see what the damage is. But I mean, you know, no, no one wants to see that happen. What's know. he done? Looks like he's smashed both, both sesamoid bones in his uh, near fetlock. So. He won't race again. He'll never race again, but hopefully we can save him, you know. But despite desperate efforts, 24 hours later, Mummify was dead. In the tradition of the great American Indian warrior horses of 200 years ago, he was buried standing up in a grove of trees on one of the Friedman farms, next to another favourite, champion sprinter Scalacci. Supposedly you're supposed to bury him standing up facing the east to the sun, but um, we sort of stuffed that up a bit. I don't know, I think we're northeast the way we've done it, but anyway, uh, it's just a nice custom, I think. The great warrior horses mm. was, was who they did it with. Yeah, and, and he's the horses a, of the great chiefs. That's right, that's right. Uh, he was a great, uh, which is interesting because my first horse I ever trained to win a race was called Sitting Bull. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't get he didn't get buried standing up. You've had some great champions in the past, and you've got a champion now. Mummify wasn't a champion, but he was special, wasn't he? No, he's very special because uh, whilst he didn't get all the adulation that uh, Maccabi Diva and those horses get uh, from the public, he, he's very much a, a champion within the industry, within the horse racing business, because uh, I think people that have been around horses a long while understand how tough they have to be to be able to withstand the, the, uh, the, the travelling that he did and the number of races he ran in. I mean, he ran in two Melbourne Cups. He just run in his third Caulfield Cup. He'd run in a Sydney Cup, uh, all over extreme distances and all different track conditions. And then uh, any time he travelled, he was a terrific traveller. He'd always go to Sydney and pick up a race in Sydney when he was there. And then he went once to Singapore in May and beat a top field there. So I think um, it's pretty clear to me that a lot of the messages that I've been receiving are from people within the industry who, who really appreciated the horse for what he was, for his toughness and durability. And, um, you know, they're the sort of horses we all want to get. I was surprised to read that at the time Mummify came along, you were in something of a flat spot. You were having financial troubles. What was that all about? 
Well, we just invested heavily uh, into the property here and, um, you know, we weren't living on welfare, but we were, you know, things were pretty tight and it, we really needed a horse like him to come along, uh, not only for the financial side of it, but also to give this place some impetus and to uh, get people to accept that this was a, you know, this was a serious operation and not just a a whimsical thing and uh, I think for all those reasons uh, he came he was the right horse at the right time and he and he did a marvelous job but by dawn today at his Mornington Peninsula training complex with a hundred highly strung horses to exercise Maccabi Diva among them Lee Friedman had tucked his grief away and got on with the job just take her in. I'll bring Chase. He can do it now. But the last thing Lee Friedman and brother Anthony need today is more bad news. And there's a ripple of concern when Maccabi's track rider returns with the news that the mighty mayor has thrown a shoe. Maccabi Diva pulled a shoe off. Fortunately, a concern that this time can be quickly dismissed. You've lost one the five, but you've still got Maccabi Diva, and there'd be those people who'd say, shrug it off. You're still one of the luckiest trainers in the world. But it's not as simple as that, is it? Oh, there's no doubt about that, Kerry. I mean, anyone who's worked with horses as long as we have, and there's plenty of people in industry who, who have been with horses all their lives, and that you, you look, any horse that, that has that meets an end like that is distressing. But when they're as good as this horse was, uh, and perhaps suffered a little bit from uh, from uh, you know having a stable mate like Maccabi Diva, who gets so much attention in terms of publicity and, and hype and that sort of thing. He, he tended to be in the shadows a bit, but, you know, you look at his record, it was extraordinary, and his earnings went into the $5 million mark after Saturday afternoon, and once again, he made, he made a headline because he went into the top 10 of all-time earners in the country. So, you know, as you said, every step of the way with him, there's been headlines. Lee Friedman, thanks for talking with us. It's a pleasure.